Hi, my name is Michelle Depoy with Education Services. This video is one in a series of videos that describe how to use eVault products and features. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to register a Windows agent to a vault using Windows Central Control. An agent must be able to connect and authenticate to a vault in order to perform backup and restore operations. You provide the necessary connection and authentication information when you register an agent to a vault. In this demonstration, a Windows agent named FS01 has already been installed and also been added to Windows Central Control. There are other videos available for you to review these topics if needed. To start the registration process, right-click on the FS01 agent, and then select Agent Configuration. The Vault tab is where you configure or modify vault registrations. Click New to register the agent with a new vault. The Vault Configuration Wizard guides you through the registration process. Click Next. There are two options for registering. Register as a new computer and re-register previously registered computer. You would typically only select the re-register option in a disaster recovery scenario where a system has failed and the operating system and agent software must be reinstalled. After reinstalling the agent, you would select re-register previously registered computer. This causes the agent to download from the vault any previously created agent and backup job configuration information. When registering a brand new agent, you will want to select Register as a new computer. With that selected, I'll click Next. For the vault's profile name, eVault recommends that you use the vault system name or location. The profile name is simply a name for the vault that appears in the backup and restore wizards later on. In this demonstration, I'll type HQ Vault and click Next. On the Network Addresses page, the new address for the vault can be entered as an IP address, a host name, or a fully qualified domain name. If you use a host name or a fully qualified domain name, the operating system on the agent host must be able to resolve it to an IP address. It is preferable to use a fully qualified domain name in environments where the IP address might change. I'll type HQ Vault and click Add and then click Next. The agent communicates with the vault on the vault's TCP port 2546. Port 807 is a legacy port that is no longer required for agent version 4 or higher. If there are firewalls between the agent and the vault, they should be opened so that the agent can initiate the connection. The default port numbers are only changed in those rare circumstances where another application is already configured to use a same port number. Accept the defaults and click Next. On the Connection Settings page, two configuration options may be changed. First, you may change the reconnection settings. If the agent were to lose network connection to the vault in the middle of a backup or restore operation, the agent by default will try to reconnect to the vault every three minutes for a window of three hours. If the agent is able to reconnect within this time frame, it will continue the operation from where it left off. If the window is exceeded, the operation will fail and will need to be restarted. You can change the reconnection settings here, but the defaults are the recommended settings. Second, you can change the over-the-wire encryption settings. If this checkbox is selected, then the network tunnel between the agent and the vault is encrypted. This is similar to using SSL security on web connections. eVault recommends that you enable over-the-wire encryption when backing up over a public internet connection. If you're backing up over a private network connection, you might choose to disable this. As with any type of encryption, it will add a small amount of CPU and memory resource overhead to the agent. I'll accept the defaults and click Next. On the authentication page, you'll enter the credentials that authenticate the agent to the vault. The credentials are necessary in order for the agent to perform backup and restore operations. These credentials are created by the vault administrator. If you are not the vault administrator, you'll need to contact them for the required credential information. In the account field, I'll type ACME for the account. For the username, I'll type eVault. And then I'll type the password. Only the password is case sensitive and then I'll click Next and finally I'll click Finish. You can now see the vault in the agent configuration window. Click OK to dismiss the window. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about using eVault products and features, be sure to view the growing number of technical demonstration videos available on our website.